I know I'm maturing and I know I'm growing because social media in general doesn't mean as much as it used to mean to me. Moving out your hometown while you're young is literally a cheat code to life, y'all. I'm telling you. I know this generation tries to devalue education and make it seem like you don't need to be smart, but you do. So I can't be with a nigga who's not getting no money because I'm getting money myself. You black are watching this, you have to know you're beautiful and you have to know you're worth and you have to demand your worth. Black women are the originator of all this fly shit. I had no self-esteem. Like, I didn't like the way I look. If you make a post about black girls this, black girls that, I'm taking it personal. They were just so cruel to black girls for no reason. How do you balance work, social life, and college? That's what I'm gonna start pulling back off social media. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Barbie K Tweety in for another mother freaking banger. And as you can see by the title of today's video, we're doing a chit chat, girls talk, get ready with me. Whatever you wanna call it. I got cute today, did my hair, did my makeup, cause I'm going out later tonight. I just wanted to show y'all my updated get ready routine. And I also wanted to answer some of y'all frequently asked questions. And just, cause I don't really have any videos on my channel explaining really who I am, my story for real. So I wanted to give y'all a little bit of information about me. But if y'all wanna keep watching, see how I got this beautiful beat like come on get into the beat get into the hair you want to see how to get this look and learn about a bad bitch then keep watching i hope y'all enjoy the video all right y'all so i did my brows off camera because y'all not about to see me on this camera looking too crazy i'm sorry this ain't that and that ain't this but i'm so excited to film this video because i don't have no videos on my channel where i like sit down and really talk to y'all and like explain to y'all who who the fuck am i who the fuck is barbie k who is she who is that literally who is that i have vlogs sit down videos hair tutorials but i don't have no video explaining who i am so that's what i'm coming today to do for y'all to tell y'all who i am and what i'm about and all that i went on my spam account so y'all to ask me some questions anything i want to know about me so hopefully y'all ask me questions before i'm done so i can get it in but i'm about to just start my makeup yeah y'all and if y'all wonder where i'm going i'm going on a date today um this basically is my first date because my last nigga you could just say the bar was in hell like you could just say the bar was in hell and that would summarize everything but i'm going on a date today i'm going to some restaurant in downtown orlando i forgot the name of it but it looked real good on instagram so i'm trying to get cute you know so this is also going to kind of be an update and makeup tutorial because my previous tutorial i think i dropped it in like september and a few things have changed not a lot though so let's get into it so this is the primer i use the elf hydro grip this primer is real good it makes my makeup stick real nice so i've been using this on my face As I do my makeup, y'all are gonna see me like barely put makeup on my forehead because I don't really put makeup on my forehead like that. This is my foundation. There we go. This is my NARS Natural Radiant. And I am in the shade Macau MD4. That's my shade. But I am gonna switch from this foundation. It's really full coverage, which is what I like in a foundation. But it's not really for oily girls. Like, I have oily skin. So if you have oily skin, maybe you shouldn't do the foundation because... My skin be looking oily. But I'm like a beast when it comes to setting my face. So if you have a good set routine, you can get away with it. Because I've been getting away with it the whole time. And I just sprayed my brush with the Milk um, Hydro Grip Setting Spray. But y'all, I'm going to start by like telling y'all some facts about me. Because I feel like I don't know the basics. So my name is Kara, but you can call me Barbie K. I'm 20 years old. I turned 20 march 13th 2023 i'm a pisces i live in orlando florida but i'm not from florida i'm actually from springfield massachusetts whenever i tell people that they be like girl where the fuck is that but like y'all need to pull out a map it's literally one of the original 13 colonies like y'all need to get y'all geography together yeah i'm from springfield massachusetts not boston springfield massachusetts it's like an hour and a half outside of boston i graduated high school in 2021 i was the COVID class so i was only in high school for two and a half years for real and a fun fact we actually found out we're not going back to school on my birthday which was march 13th i still remember that day i was at my friend raven's house and all three of us were chilling in her attic and found out we was not going back to school it was literally my birthday ain't that something um the main people y'all probably gonna see me with on this channel i don't really have a lot of friends my first friend is raven i've been her friend since sixth grade literally since middle school we go way back like 
that's my girl. That's literally like my blood, my blood sister. I consider her my family. All my family knows her. Like, uh, I just love Raven so bad. Like, we've seen each other grow literally since we were jits. So that's my first friend y'all gonna see me with. Then, the friend y'all probably familiar with is Bree. Bree's my friend who I also went to high school with her, but she moved to Florida along with me. And she's probably my closest friend right now. I love Bree so bad. Like, Bree is my sister, y'all. I don't think y'all understand. Bree is my sister. Like, me and Bree are locked in real ass. So that's my second friend y'all gonna see me with. Also, I be with Fiona, but she's not my friend. She's my cousin, and we literally grew up together. And then, what other friends I got? I got my friend Cam. She lives back home, but whenever I'm back home, or whenever she's up here, we try and see each other. I love Cam. I feel like Cam is so wise. Like, I wouldn't even call her smart. I would call her wise. Like, she's like an old soul, you know? Like, you know, like, you have friends who just, they just know so much. Like, you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, she's an old soul. And I love Cam. And we actually met through my ex nigga. So that's why I don't say I regret my ex nigga because I met Cam through him. And if I regret him, that means I regret Cam. I don't regret Cam. So that's literally the only reason why I don't say I regret my ex nigga. As far as male friends, I got a few male friends back home. But yeah, those are my people for real. I don't be around a lot of people. And if I forgot somebody, don't be offended, y'all. I got short term memory loss. So please, not too much on me. For concealer, I'm going in with this e.l.f. Camo Concealer my concealer and i'm in the shade deep cinnamon but now that y'all know a little bit about me my age my friends and all that i'm trying to think what else y'all be asking me like what y'all want to know oh a lot of y'all think that i live on my own out here in florida i do not live on my own y'all i live with my mama i stay in my mama crib i'm a baby like i can't be on my own just yet i'm not ready for all that y'all be thinking i got my own apartment girl it's not no apartment this is a house Okay, this is a house, y'all. I live with my mom. My mom is the best. I literally have like the best mom in the entire world. It's crazy how lucky I got with such a cool mom. Like my mom is so supportive. I know for a fact, like if anything was to ever go wrong in my life, I can call my mom. And that's a really good feeling to have. It's a really good feeling. I just love my mom so bad. Like <laughs> I can't explain it. I just love her. And if y'all want to see my mom in a video, let me know because I would actually love to put her on a video. And I know y'all gonna be in the comments like, girl, consistency question mark? Like, does that exist with you? And you're right. I do need to do better. But it's summertime, y'all. But I am a full-time college student, okay? And I'm a, on a pre-law track. One day, I'm gonna be an attorney. I'm gonna have a Juris Doctorate degree and I'm gonna be an attorney. And school, be stressful. Especially when you're like me and you're an overachiever. So to me, anything less than an A, it's not good enough. A B can cut it sometimes depending on how hard the class is. So a B will work sometimes, but anything under, under than an A, I feel like I didn't I feel like I didn't understand the assignment. Like I feel like anything under than an A, I'm wasting my own money. Cause my mom pays for my college and I just feel like if I come home with anything under than an A, it's like what is she really paying for, you know? So I'm really good in school and I really do apply myself. I stress myself out. And I'm also a procrastinator. So not only do I want to do good in school, but I'm a procrastinator. So I'll be doing the most at the last minute. And that makes it kind of hard to balance YouTube and school, but I do my best. And I always stress to you guys, I've said it in previous videos, but I'm gonna say it again on this one. I don't put YouTube before school. YouTube is like a hobby to me. It's like a passion that I just happen to get paid for. I don't even do YouTube for the money. I do it because it's something I've always wanted to do since I was little, but I don't put YouTube over school. So if it comes to like, oh, I have a sponsorship due tomorrow, but I also have an assignment due tomorrow, I'm picking the assignment every trip. YouTube is a hobby, not my dream career. A few of my subscribers, we be texting on my spam account and y'all be asking me like, when's another video coming? When's another video coming? Like, you're not consistent. I do what I can, y'all. I really do try. I'm a procrastinator, like I already said, but school is always gonna come before YouTube. YouTube is just a hobby that I happen to get paid for. But going back on the school track, a lot of y'all wanna know what school I go to. I go to a community college here in Florida, in Orlando, and next year I'm transferring to a school in Georgia, but I'm not gonna say the name of the school. I'm not even gonna drop the city. If you y'all know, if you follow my spam, and if you just be like, keep it shit, you know what school I'm going to already. But I'm not gonna drop the name of the school until my moving series kicks off because back to school season, y'all. Watch, y'all talking about not consistent. Watch me then. Back to school, Kara, go eat. Cause I really love back to school content. My living situation is really, really cool for next year. So I'm really about to be vlogging all that. So I'm not dropping the name of my school until then, but y'all will still see me like doing my college shopping and all that. Cause I'm gonna be recording all that for you guys. And then after I'm done with my undergraduate degree, um, I will be going off to law school. I don't know what law school I wanna go to yet. My goal is to go to a T14 law school. If you don't know what that means, it just means like one of the higher, the top 14 law schools in the country, basically. Oh, I didn't show y'all my concealer I used. This is the concealer that I used, y'all. 
the Fenty Beauty concealer and this is in the shade 370. But yeah, I do wanna go to a prestigious law school because it doesn't really matter what law school you go to, but the more prestigious, the better job placements you'll get. Cause you know how that goes with name recognition and stuff like that. So I do wanna go to a good law school. I'm not saying I wanna go to Harvard or Yale or nothing. I probably, I actually don't wanna go to Harvard or Yale. I don't think I'm up for that challenge. There's like some T14 law schools that are like pass fail or like somewhere they make it really hard for you to fail. Like it's damn near impossible to fail. And I think I want to go to a school like that because I'm not trying to be stressed for three years. I know I'm gonna be stressed. Like I know law school is difficult, but I'm not trying to be like, you know, too stressed now. Nah, I'm not trying to be too stressed. Yeah, that's like a little bit about my education, where I plan on going. I will be graduating college in 2024. I mean, no, 2025. So I'll see y'all then for the graduation content. And I'm actually so excited for that, y'all. I'm really excited to graduate college. I haven't even got to my four year college yet and I'm already excited to graduate from there. I just value education. Like this generation doesn't really value it anymore, but I value it because I've been smart since I was in grade school. Like good grades is never really a problem for me. School kind of came easy to me. I'm really good at school. So I really like school and graduating college with my degree in criminal justice. Oh yeah, I didn't even tell you my degree. What is wrong with me? My degree is a bachelor's in criminal justice with a concentration in legal authority and a minor in African-American studies. So my degree is in criminal justice and I'm concentrating on legal authority like legal work, law, cause you know, I'm on a pre-law track. And I also chose the African-American minor, not cause I want to get a job around that, but because I just want to educate myself on that and have that on my resume. Because I don't know what kind of attorney I want to be, but I think I want to be a civil rights attorney, I think. I don't know, be indecisive. I don't know yet for sure, but I think I do want to be a civil rights attorney. So being a civil rights attorney and having that African-American minor will really come in helpful. Also y'all, I am taking summer classes at my school right now. I'm taking two classes. I was gonna take five, but I decided not to stress myself out because I'll be taking like five plus classes for the rest of my undergraduate career, you could say. So I want to just use this summer to just take two classes, keep it easy, keep the coursework light so that I can just get on my fun out now because soon I'm not even gonna have time for social media. Let me explain to y'all what I mean by that. So I honestly, I love YouTube. YouTube is something that I've wanted to wanted to do since I was like in elementary school, y'all. Literally elementary school. But like social media in general, I know I'm maturing and I know I'm growing because social media in general is not, doesn't mean as much as it used to mean to me. Now let me elaborate, let me elaborate. Before I moved to Florida, y'all, I was in school back home in Springfield, but I didn't really care for school like that. I definitely didn't want to go to no grad school. I did not have the motivation, anything like that. I didn't really care for it. And I wanted to be like a full-time influencer and like a full-time hairstylist. That's what I wanted to do. And that's honestly a really good goal. So if you have that goal, do not think anything less just because I wanted to change my goal. Like as I started thinking more and more, like I just feel like I want more for myself. Like I want that career, y'all. I literally want a career where I know for a fact like I'm straight. I want a career where I can set myself up and set my kids up in the future for generational wealth. Cause literally set me and my brother up generational wealth from her career. So that made me think like, okay, I low key don't wanna do this influencing thing forever. Like I feel like it's a good tool to network and make money when you're young and still have fun. It doesn't feel like a job. It feels more fun like, cause you're creating content and stuff like that. But I don't see myself doing this forever. You know what I mean? So having said that, I think when I turn 21 going on 22, that's when I'm gonna start pulling back off social media. And even now, I don't use it as often as I used to, but I'll probably like get off Instagram completely. And um, I'll still be on YouTube by posting my content, but I'll definitely be less personal on here. It'll be like me posting my content and dipping type shit. It won't be like, you know, sit down, hearts to hearts like this. It'll be more, you know, work because when I'm in law school and even like the final semesters of my undergraduate degree, it's gonna be a lot. Like I already know, it's gonna be a challenge and I'm up for the challenge, but I'm not gonna be able to do everything. So I already told myself in my head, I'm gonna take a step back from social media. When school starts, okay, it's time. You know what I mean? And like even next year's spring semester, I actually think I'm gonna go ghost for a whole entire semester of Instagram. I'm still gonna post on YouTube. Whenever I say social media, y'all, I'm not talking about YouTube. I'm talking about Instagram and TikTok and shit like that, not YouTube. But like Instagram, I definitely see myself getting off Instagram my spring semester because my spring semester next year, I'm taking seven classes, so. I don't see myself using Instagram then. So yeah, that's where I see myself in the next few years. Like I have a really clear vision 
of where I want to go with my life. And I also do see myself like, not, I wouldn't call it changing my niche, but just changing my image. Like, if you follow me on Instagram, I know I'm a bad young thing, so I'll be posting pictures, like, you know, showing my body and stuff like that. But I'm slowly starting to pull away from that. Not because I feel ashamed about it or I'm having second thoughts about it. Because, shit, I'd do it again. My body looks good and I feel like y'all should know that. But at the same time, I'm starting to think more like career oriented and more future oriented. So I don't really want to post pictures like that that can come back in the future and I wouldn't say bite me because I don't think it would bite me. But, you know, like I have, I'd have to explain myself type shit and I don't want to have to do that. So... I am taking a step back from that. Now, if y'all see me in Jamaica posting a thong bikini, okay, I try, but in general, like overall, I do see myself taking a step back from posting that type of content. Especially when I get on campus next year, my Instagram's gonna look like a lot of reels, like college content, day in the life of a pre-law student. Like, I just wanna change the direction my Instagram's going in. I'm gonna show y'all actually who inspired me to make this change, I guess you could say. And I'm not making it right now either my instagram if you go in there right now i still got some pictures up that you could consider controversial i'm saying like in the future like down the line going forward this is where i plan on going this content creator her name is ashley since chantelle y'all might know her and she's like a nursing student and i'm not even a nursing major and i still find her page and her content and what she posts very inspiring and helpful because like you could be a bad bitch and still be an educated one too so i'm just trying to navigate the bad bitch and the educated route you know what i'm saying that's where i'm going with myself you can either support me and show love or you can hate and talk shit but regardless i'm gonna do me so y'all, yeah, I actually was supposed to film a girls talk a few weeks ago and I went on my Instagram for her to ask me questions, but I filmed it and I didn't like the way that the video came out. So I didn't post the video, but I did screenshot the responses y'all left me. So I'm gonna go through those right now, just so we have some things to talk about. Okay, so the first question was, how do you balance work, social life, and college? Yes, girl, it's a lot. Cause I do work um, a job. I don't work no 40 hours a week, but I do work Wednesday through Sunday every week. So it does get overwhelming. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. It gets overwhelming. I can't tell you how many times I was at work. Cause my job's not even close till two in the fucking morning. I can't even tell y'all how many times I was at work and I literally was on my phone doing homework running food at the same damn time like it definitely gets stressful but here's what I can say I feel like managing your time is the best thing for you like if you know you have a busy week school wise like you have a lot of assignments in each of your classes and let's say you also want to get out two videos this week utilize that whole Monday through Friday and the whole 24 hours in the whole day you have to utilize your time that's the only advice I can really give you because when I utilize my time and I wake up at 8 in the morning and I get shit done off the wake up y'all I be so productive like I get so much stuff done but when I procrastinate that's when shit gets wicked that's when shit gets crazy because now i'm running out of time i'm having to rush stuff like that things doesn't get done um tasks get overlooked so my best advice to you is plan out your days and utilize your whole entire day if your first class will start till 11 you can get up at 8 and you can get shit done from 8 to 10 30. that's a whole two and a half hours you can get a whole lot done so utilize your whole entire day Somebody asked me, what was the best decision you made in 2022? My best decision was definitely moving to Florida out of my hometown. Moving out your hometown when you're young is literally a cheat code to life, y'all. I'm telling you, it's a cheat code to life. If I still live in Springfield where I'm from, I would have definitely not started my YouTube channel. I would have not been doing this well in school. Like, so much stuff that I have accomplished right now would not have got accomplished if I still stayed in my hometown. So I really do urge everybody that I know to get the fuck out your hometown. Like, no, for real. Get out your hometown. Because you don't even know how much your hometown's holding you back until it's time to leave your hometown. At first, y'all, I didn't even want to move out my city. I wanted to stay in my bum ass hometown. Like I was literally trapped in that mindset of you need to stay in your hometown. But thankful enough, my mom literally dragged me out that city and brought me to Orlando, Florida where I'm literally changing my life. So thank you. Thank you, mom, if you're watching this, thank you. Cause I don't thank you enough for that. Yeah, that's definitely the best decision I made was moving out of Springfield and living in Florida. Even though I'm not gonna be in Florida come August, one of my friends said, talk about your experience of being a black girl growing up and how it is now. I actually have a lot to say about this. Y'all not might y'all might not like my take, but I'm gonna talk my shit. So growing up in Springfield, Massachusetts, being a black girl, ooh, 
it was hard it was hard i'm not about to lie it was hard y'all i had no self-esteem like i remember being in elementary school and like i had curly hair obviously so i would like pull my hair like i'd be at at school in my desk pulling my hair to try and prove to the white girls that i got hang time i remember begging my mom for a perm like i want i want straight hair i want this this and that i got silk presses every two weeks by my auntie vanette i had no self-esteem like i didn't like the way i look preschool through like first grade i went to a catholic school so i only had a few black classmates the rest were white girls so automatically i don't see nobody who looks like me so i'm already thrown off and i'm already insecure then the public schools i went to like they were just so cruel to black girls for no reason like i remember in eighth grade i had micro braids and they told me my hair looked like ramen noodles i remember in high school there was this post going around i think it was on valentine's day and they were saying like only you red bones get to celebrate valentine's day you black bitches get nothing like the fuck like what the f like what y'all even talking about and it's so crazy because like people that i consider my friends for posting this post like and yeah i'm gonna take it personal because i'm lit like i'm gonna take it personal every time i don't care that's one thing about me if you make a post about black girls this black girls that i'm taking it personal i'm taking it so fucking personal you guys know that about me that used to throw me off so bad like they would literally bash us and my first little crush or whatever in high school uh, don't come for me because i did not know my worth back then but he literally used to go on and on about how he wants a light-skinned thick bitch do i look light-skinned y'all do i look light-skinned y'all I am not no light skinned girl. And my man, literally the nigga I was with, my man in high school was literally posted about one on a light skin. Like, I'm not gonna lie, growing up black where I'm from, it was not easy. Black girls were undesired. Like, they just talked so much shit about us. And you know what's crazy now though? You know what's so crazy now? You know what's so crazy now? And like I said, y'all might not like this take, but black girls are the social standard if you ask me. This is the blush I'm using by the way, y'all. Zior, rosy glow, you gotta know. But yeah, I honestly truly feel like black girls are the standard now. Everything you see with lace fronts, lashes, acrylic nails, who is the originator of all that? I'll wait. answer yet it's literally black women black women are the originator of all this fly shit okay all this fly shit so i just find it so funny how back then we were undesired i would talk shit about oh you're wearing a wig they would be like why are you wearing fake lashes you got a weave on your eyes all this now look now look y'all like i don't care what nobody says black girls are the originator of this fly shit and is and we are and all the niggas who was bashing black girls back then literally those be the same niggas on my story right now you look so fine da, 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 da. how can you be this pretty nah 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 growing up black was not easy but i literally love being a black girl i wouldn't trade it for anything anything like anything i love myself i love my skin i love my culture i love my hair and i feel like every black girl listen i'm for the black girls okay i'm not even much against the details because if you know me in real life you know i'm for the black girls before i'm for anything black women live a different life than anybody else walking this earth so i'm for the black girls so any black girl watching this you have to know you're beautiful and you have to know your worth and you have to demand your worth you don't ask for your worth bitch you demand that shit okay somebody asked me what happened to me in cosmetology school this is actually a good question because y'all probably didn't even know this information when i moved to florida or whatever i enrolled in cosmetology school in august my first day was august 1st and i was only in cosmetology school for one month because i decided to go back to college instead and i don't regret that decision because like i said to y'all before i wanted to be an influencer and a hairstylist so going to cosmo school was the right path to take to get licensed because if i'm gonna do hair if i'm gonna do anything i'm gonna do it the right way and i'm gonna be damn good at it fun fact about pisces we're good at everything we do and i'm not saying to be cocky or overzealous no 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 no, no. pisces really are good at everything they do so yeah if i was gonna do hair and go full out with this hair shit i knew that i wanted to get licensed and do it the proper way i'm not trying to do it where someone can call the state board on me and get my ass fined and shit i wanted to do it the right proper way so i don't regret cosmo school i just changed my mind i just wanted to go back to school go back to college and change my path and that's okay that's one thing about me like we're young it's okay to change your mind and figure out what you want to do especially people who are in my class because it was only in high school for two and a half years those other two years of people used to decide what they want to do with their life we didn't even get that it's okay to change your mind and go from a hairstylist to an attorney ain't nothing wrong with that somebody asked me do you have any kids i don't have no kids girl um i mm -mm. 
I don't got no kids. I'm not having no kids no time soon. I'm probably not gonna have no kids till I'm damn near in my 30s because I have to go through undergrad and after I get out of undergrad, I wanna secure my career before I have a kid. I used to want a kid sooner than that. I used to want a kid at like, all right, don't kill me, y'all. I used to want a kid at like 23. I think babies are so cute, especially little girls, but you know, I was bugging. But I'm back now to reality, so don't worry about that. Somebody asked me, um, what are your three major dating standards? Okay, so this is a good question. I'm glad somebody asked me this. My three major dating standards. First thing is I can't be with a man who can't already match what I have for myself. I feel like this is a very, very fair standard to have. For example, I'm not saying I'm rich, cause I'm not, I'm literally a college student. I am not rich by any means, but I get myself my own money. I get, I get some money. So I can't be with a nigga who's not getting no money. And that's, first of all, people, I never said he has to be rich, well set off, none of that. I never said that. I just said getting money, cause I'm getting money myself. So you have to be able to match that. I can't be with a man who has less than me. Y'all can have whatever opinion you want about that. Like you're really entitled to that opinion. But me personally, I don't care because I already did the being with a nigga who you have more than and the problem is when you're with a nigga who you have more than and you're always investing into him pouring into him building him up da -da -da -da, the heartbreak hurts more because you feel like like it's a poor investment you know what I'm saying you invested all this time money energy resources into a nigga who promised when he's up y'all gonna be here and then it never got there because he left so if you invest your time energy money like that into a nigga it's just it's never worth it and one thing about me one thing about me i'm not raising no fully grown man especially since most of the things i talk to are older than me i'm not raising no nigga older than me i'm not i'm supposed to be your girlfriend not your mother i'm not raising you so first standard he has to be able to at least match what i already have for myself and if you can't match that i'm sorry and that goes for everything like okay i have a car so you gotta come with a car who just gotta you gotta be able to at least match what I already have. And that's the minimum, okay? Second standard. Okay, so you know how like nowadays a lot of niggas have this little boy mindset. I don't even gotta get into details about what it is, but if he's like that, I don't want him. I don't want him. If you feel like treating a girl right makes you a sim, anything like that, all this little ass boy shit, I'm not with it. I don't want him. I don't want him. I don't want him. Y'all can keep him. That one's for y'all. I don't want him. I don't like a nigga with immature ass, uh, immature ass mindset. Period. No, nah, I can't get down with that. I'm sorry, I can't. Uh -uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And like niggas who like secretly bash females all day long, bitches this and hoes this and bitches that. Like, okay, go get you a boyfriend then. I want you to get you a boyfriend because I don't think women are for you. And then my third standard, hmm, I'm trying to look at my three non-negotiables. The thing about me is I can't work with what I don't physically see, okay? If your actions are not backing up what you're saying, nigga, I can't work with the rah-rah. I'm not, I'm not working with the rah-rah. I can't do it. I'm not. No, nah. Another thing that I'm on right now real bad is one and done. The first time, literally the first time a nigga has you fucked up, that's exactly when I say goodbye and I stop texting them. Because my last nigga, right? Millions of chances, y'all. And at the very end of the day, that's what I've learned. Niggas don't change when you forgive them. It's not rocket science. A nigga did it once, he would do it again. So I'm a one and done type of girl. The first time you have me fucked up, I'm good. And another thing about me is I don't explain myself. So if you have me fucked up and I block you, that's just that. Bye. There's no, oh, what did I do? There's none of that. There's no back and forth. There's no conversating. It's that, that's it, we're done. I don't explain myself. I feel like I don't owe anybody an explanation, especially a nigga who doesn't do anything for me. Somebody asked me, how do you work on becoming a better you? Okay, this is actually really good. I have a few tips for this because ever since I moved to Florida, I've actually been on this journey of trying to do better with myself and just learning myself all together. First thing you gotta do is you gotta educate yourself, girl. I know the generation tries to devalue education and make it seem like you don't need to be smart, but you do. You do gotta be smart. Being dumb is really unattractive. Now I'm not saying go out and get you a PhD. All I'm saying is educate yourself. That could literally mean picking up a book every once in a while or going to a TED talk. It could mean anything. It does not have to mean going to school. Okay, but learn something. You should be trying to learn. Like, you gotta educate yourself, man. I feel like that's the number one thing when it comes to leveling up in life and becoming a better you. Education is attractive. Second tip I have for leveling up in life is 
taking accountability. Now, for example, I'm gonna give y'all, this is an example. Nowadays, I see a lot of girls dealing with a nigga, right? And he's treating them bad, he's lying, he's doing his own thing. And they're wondering, why does he keep treating me this way? Why does he, why does he, why does he, why does he? But they fail to take accountability for their own actions and the root of the cause. I'm not saying that you're the reason you're getting cheated on. I'm saying you're the reason it's continuing to happen because you chose to stay. So I feel like taking accountability and looking in the mirror and really figuring out where things are going wrong is how you level up. Even with me, for example, when I was in Springfield, I was like type lazy. And I'm like, okay, maybe I'm lazy because I'm smoking weed. So you know what I did? When I moved, I stopped smoking. As far as being a habitual smoker, that's not me. And like people try and make me that and they be like, oh, you don't know how to roll, da 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 da. I'm okay with not being a smoker. You don't gotta smoke weed to be happy, y'all. You really don't. You really don't, like. And I hate that y'all think that I hate that for y'all. I'm about to put on my lash glue, so you'll probably see me looking down. Another way to level up, <laughs> I know I look crazy with the lash glue, but another way to level up is going to the gym and working out. Even if you love your body and you don't wanna change your body at all, working out is so beneficial because you're teaching yourself discipline. And discipline is so important. You need discipline for damn near everything you do in life. So working out is about building habits. It's not even all just about getting thick or getting skinny or whatever your goal is in the gym. Also, being healthy. Okay, I'm gonna just leave it at that, being healthy. Pour into your body. If you're like sluggish and tired all day and you're probably not healthy on the inside, take you some vitamins, drink you some celery juice, get your body right on the inside, okay? Because your health really is important. Somebody asked me how many tattoos do I have? Um, I think I have seven, let's count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six on my leg and seven on my back. So yeah, I got seven tattoos. Um, I do plan on getting more. I'm gonna get the top of my shoulder. I'm not gonna get up here because I don't wanna have anything up here. I wanna be able to wear a shirt and have all this, you know, blank. But like I'm getting like the side of my arm and eventually this will be a whole sleeve, eventually. But not for a while though. Y'all, I haven't worn strips in months because I've been having lash extensions. So I'm not that good at putting on lashes anymore. I'm getting the hang of it again, low key. But those lash extensions had to go. I was just so tired of not being able to wash my face the same way, like not being able to rub my eyes. I had to get that removal. These strips are cute. They get the job done. So yeah, lashes on. Honestly, my face is done. All I have to do is add my little fake moles. I've been adding fake moles to my makeup lately and I really, really love it. And I do it every time I do my makeup now because it's so cute. And I put them in the same place every time. I can't even see them until I get up close, but... The molds are so cute to me. Now I'm gonna just do some mascara on my bottom lashes. All right, y'all, now I'm gonna start on my hair. Right now, I just have this side part. Ooh, <laughs> what the fuck? Side part, straight, bust down. But I did my hair a few days ago and it still looks really cute. I'm about to straighten it. Like, I just beat the fuck out my face. Like, what's really good, y'all? <laughs> This summer, y'all, I have so much coming from my channel, and it's like I blew up so quick on YouTube. I didn't even really get time to develop like a set posting schedule. Now that I only have two classes at school, I finally have time to get back on my content creator shit. So just know that content is coming. I actually have two trips planned in the next three weeks. I'm gonna be traveling a lot this summer, prepping for school. So I have a lot to show you guys. And I've been getting quicker with editing. I'm honestly excited to take this summer on YouTube. And I also just love filming y'all. Like YouTube is deeper than the money to me for the simple fact that this is really a visual diary. Like if you're doing YouTube y'all and you feel discouraged because your views are not hitting, think about it this way. One day you're gonna be able to look back and show your kids your whole teenage years off YouTube. And I feel like that is worth more than any YouTube check could pay you. That's how I look at YouTube, like a visual diary. Like when I'm missing my friends, when I'm missing Brie and Raven, I literally go back and watch our Miami vlog. Or when I'm missing Brie, I go and watch our girls' day vlog. Like, this shit is literally a visual diary. YouTube is not just 
money for me. I really enjoy this shit. And this might sound shallow, but I actually really enjoy flexing on people who talked about me from my hometown because it's like, yeah, I'm really out here living better than you and you can watch and see. Like it's really in your face broad day, like right now, today, in your face. Like what's really deep, what's really good. And I know some people don't like having that mindset, but me personally, that keeps me going. I'm not even ashamed to admit that because the same people who doubted me are the same people who watched my videos today. So I hope y'all see me living good, living better than you. And I know you wish that you didn't doubt me. Well, sucks to be you. Fun fact about me, I'm good at everything I do. So doubting me, it's not your best bet. It's not a good investment, baby girl. <laughs> Y'all, Nicki Minaj just dropped on her Instagram that she's going on tour soon. And I just want to say, girls, ladies, get y'all Nicki tour money put aside. Because me and my girls, we coming for that Nicki tour. When I tell y'all we coming, we coming. I might just go to two tour dates just because she's really my mom for real. Like, I don't think there's nobody on this platform who's a bigger Nicki fan than me. Like, what's really good? What's really tea? Like, here's Juga Barbie, bitch. <laughs> I'm going to Nikki's tour. I'm getting front row. If she's doing a meet and greet, you best believe I'm doing that. I'm getting the premium tickets. I'm getting the premium package. I'm getting there. I'm getting there early. Like I'm doing the most. My channel is Barbie K. That alone should tell y'all how much Nicki Minaj means to me. Like my name is literally Barbie K. Uh, so I kind of want to talk about navigating friendships and stuff like that. I'm not even gonna say friendships because I feel like this applies for any relationship. It could be a cousin, your auntie, your mom, even. I feel like if you ever realize that anybody in your life is just not serving you, bringing you down, or you are going harder for them than they go for you, I feel like you have the right to take a step back. I'm not saying cut them off. And if it comes to that, cut them off and cut them off with no remorse. But I'm saying like, you have the right to take a step back from a friendship or relationship. And that's what I find myself doing right now because it's like, okay, clearly you're on some other shit. You're clearly on some other shit and I don't really want no parts and what the fuck you got going on right now. So respectfully, like respectfully though, I'm gonna take a step back from you. And it's still all love of course, but I need to take a step back. Like y'all, it's kind of getting me vexed right now. Like just think about it but i feel like we should normalize that like it's okay to take a step back and that doesn't mean you're moving funny or moving fake i think it just means you're protecting your peace and there's nothing wrong with being selfish because if you're not looking out for yourself who's who's looking out for you exactly yeah i feel like i don't even gotta fix my edges for real because my edges are like fluffy right now but they're like fluffy and cute and they still got that swoop i don't even gotta do my edges my hair looks really cute. I love me a good side part, y'all. I look really good. Like, I keep looking in the mirror because fuck. Like, this face to die for. So, y'all, this is my final look. What do y'all think? I think I look the fuck good. Like, oh my god, y'all. I want to take pictures now because I just look so pretty. But I'm so excited to go out and I love going out when I look good. And I'm glad that I got ready early so that I could film this video and get cute and let y'all see my little updated face routine. But that's gonna conclude today's video. I hope y'all enjoyed my little chit chat, get ready with me. I don't know y'all, cause I be insecure about sit down videos cause I talk really fast for one. For two, I feel like I always get off topic and get distracted. So I be feeling insecure like, okay, they don't wanna hear all this rambling. But I'm gonna post this video. And y'all let me know if you like it, if you fuck with it. Let me know what y'all like. If y'all want more sit down videos, more talking videos, more Q&As, let me know. But I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all.